Big Of course, as the balconies rise sky high, it is because here the noble spirit of Puerto Rico's origins flourished. Ponce was named after Juan Ponce de Oro y Luisa, the great grandson of the Tan Conqueror, and also named for him is the Ponce coat of arms, the lion over the bridge. Every baluster, every stained glass window, and its noble woods hides stories of masters and farmers, Spanish and Creoles, bronze and mestizos, and together discovered in Ponce the permanence of their heritage. Families build a city like you, step by step, brick by brick, a city with nobility and good demeanor, a seniority city. Its richness blossoms from the earth, a green stalk crowned with a white flower which came to us from the South Pacific, a crispertion Egypt to Spain, thanks to the Arab invasions, was brought to the island by Don Juan Ponce de Leon in 1508, and from that point on, until the early 20th century, the history of sugarcane is the basis of Puerto Rico's economy, and a great part of that history was written right here. Ponce, a la Sierra de Cedita. Sebastián Cervalles, a Spaniard, settled in Ponce and established a Sierra Teresa. However, he decided to return to Spain and left it to his son, Juan Cervalles, to administer it. Juan developed one of the island's most powerful estates, a Sierra de Cedita, named after Juan Cervalles' wife, Mercedes Perez. Mercedita was founded in 1861. By 1869, Mercedita was a medium-sized estate consisting of 350 acres, and by 1877, it became 850-acre production unit. Like most of the estates of its time, its production processes covered the planting of the sugar cane, the making of the sugar cane at its own factory, and product exportation to the external markets, particularly the United States, England, and France. Due to this multiple economic activity, the estate generated a social relations system of its own. It changed, for example, the town's original geography, adding to its territory the other estates that Don Juan Cervalles bought, Hacienda Fe, Teresa, Bronze, and Laurel. By 1890, Juan Cervalles already owned a production unit of 4,000 acres. Mercerita was a very advanced farming and industrial project for its time. Its technology was so advanced that even today it is still in effect, like the cane mill still in use, although electricity is used. The grinding system hasn't been topped yet. Thus, Hacienda Mercedita is an extraordinary example of advanced international technology prior to the change in sovereignty in Puerto Rico's 19th century. The commercial activity that flourishes toward Mercedita equally impacts Ponce's development as well as its vicinity. Families like the Cortado besides distinguishing themselves through commerce, offered financing to many enterprises, including the Mercedita Mill. By the same token, the intense activity of sugar exports turned the Ponce Harbor into an active commercial exchange center. Mercedita also adopted technological advances in order to make a more efficient production process. Its greatest 19th century ally, the train. In 1880, Mercedita was cataloged by Don Santiago McCormick as the model to be followed by the sugar producers in Puerto Rico. The system involved more than 16 kilometers of permanent railroads, four kilometers of mobile ones, the locomotives, and 123 cars with a capacity of 115 net hundredweights each year. Mercedita was a vital part of Ponce's progress. 
and progress that came at full speed. Sugar, sugar cane molasses, and rum from the Celayas distillery were our first industrial products. Inside these specially prepared barrels, the rum experiences a series of changes due to the particular romance between the aromatic liquor and the wood. To achieve this, the 50-gallon barrels have been proven to be the best. It is here where the art of making the best rum is kept. Here, where the different brands are differentiated. Cervalles the stories, master artisans, pour the magic of their secrets of more than a century rum making, kept as a family treasure. Hill, the Senorial City's four cardinal points can be seen. Throughout the years, silent witness to the history of the city, the Celayas Castle has become today the Celayas Castle Museum. From a spacious receiving hall with two massive oak doors, we enter the indoor patio, a patio which denounces the influence of Spaniard resurgence. The design of its fountains and secret gardens was influenced by the Arabs. Don Juan Cervalles Perez ordered its construction in 1930 to live there with his wife, Doña Rosa Maria Sanchez, and to populate it with her heirs, Doña Rosita, Don Juan Eugenio, and Don Felix Juan. Its architect has enough history to fill it. A graduate of Syracuse University in New York, Don Pedro Adolfo de Castro de Sosa was also a poet, sculptor, mosaic maker, plumber, electrician, and aviator. At the Cervellas Castle, Don Pedro Adolfo put to work all his talents. In the formal living room, which connects to the library, the parquet floor, oak windows, the Castro style tiles, arcs and stained glass windows add to the charming detail of the house. Also in each room, family life can be felt. 
the influence of ancestors of their lineage which founded the Sugar Empire in the mid 19th century, when Sebastian Semagas left Catalonia to establish himself in Puerto Rico. His descendants, his grandchildren, his great grandchildren, and his great great grandchildren ran through these halls, ran in its library, shared his music hall, and chatted on their moonlit terraces. But Castle encompasses the history of an era, of a family, of a social class, of a production system. Those castles is but one page of a diary. A moment frozen in our history, which reminds us of a distant world. Our world. The world created by a family, which was for over three generations, our leader in his land's destiny.